I'm going to show you how to use REST in Orchestrator. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. This is part 10 in a 10 part video series in which we're exploring how to make REST API calls. Here in part 10, we're going to be looking specifically at Orchestrator. We're going to mix things up a bit here in the part 10 videos. In part 9, we are talking about how to communicate with the ARIA Automation REST server. In the part 10 videos, we're going to start by first talking about how to use an orchestrator workflow as a REST client. So let's uh, jump into orchestrator and see how to do this. Uh, as you can see, I'm already logged into ARIA Automation and I'm on the console for services and one of the services here is called orchestrator. So we'll go into orchestrator and what we're going to do here is go into workflows. Now, when you go into workflows by default, it's going to be in this card view that you see here. And you can work in this card view to find the workflows that we're about to run here. But I think you'll find it easier if you're beginning uh, with orchestrator to go to the tree view. So over here in the tree view, as you can see, we have a number of different folders that have been created by default. I'm going to go into the library folder. That's where orchestrator plugins put their workflows. So if we go into library, there's a folder called HTTP REST. Uh, notice there's also one called HTTP REST samples. We'll talk about that later. But HTTP REST is the folder that contains the bulk of the workflows provided by the REST plugin that we've already installed into orchestrator. By the way, the uh, plugin is already installed by default, so you don't have to install this one. Now, as you can see here, when you first look at HTTP REST workflows, you'll see that there's a workflow called invoke a REST operation. And of course, you're going to want to run that workflow first, but don't because there's a, a, a series of steps that you need to go through. It's not hard, but you cannot just run invoke a REST operation. What you first need to do is to configure this plugin. And like lots of other plugins, the REST plugin has a folder called configuration. And as you can see here, this plugin has a number of different configuration workflows. Now, the one we're going to work on first in this video is called add a REST host. We'll talk about others in a bit. In fact, the general sequence that you'll go through is add a, red, add a REST host, then you'll choose to add a REST operation, then you can invoke a REST operation. But to get the ball rolling, we have to start first with add a REST host. Now we're just about to run this workflow, but I'd like to take you on a quick little tangent here. If we go over and look at what's known as the inventory, uh, this is where Orchestrator has an entry for all the different plugins we have installed. And for each of those plugins, if you expand them, you can see what objects each plugin knows about. Here's our REST plugin. If we expand it, you'll notice it's completely empty. We need to add a REST host in order for it to show up here. So let's go back to workflows and we are going to run add a rest host. So we select add a rest host. We click run. The first thing we need to do is to give our rest server connection a name. So I'm going to call this one jokes server. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is connecting to the jokes rest server that we saw as an example in an earlier video. So I specify the URL where we're going to connect to the REST server. Then I have two timeouts I can set here. Both of these default timeout values are uh, very generous. I, I wouldn't expect that you would need to change these timeouts, but if you need to, you can change them here. So connection timeout is how much time orchestrator will allow uh, the initial connection. And then the operation timeout is how long orchestrator is going to wait for each operation that we execute. Again, both values are very generous here. The next thing that we can do here by selecting this checkbox is to tell Orchestrator to automatically import the certificate. Notice we're using HTTPS, so automatically import the certificate from this server. I'm going to go ahead and accept the certificate automatically. I happen to note that this particular REST server is capable of processing requests in parallel. I'll read your documentation to find out what the situation is with your REST server. 
And additionally, while you're reading the documentation, take a look at what it has to say with the URL redirection. I'm going to go with the default redirect policy. As you can see, there's not many questions to answer here on this page, but there are multiple pages. On the next page, host authentication, we are going to choose from this list of authentication mechanisms. Now, we've already talked about authentication mechanisms in an earlier video. If you don't recognize what these are, take a look at the playlist, go back to the authentication video. For the Jokes server, we can use good old none. It requires no authentication. So I'm going to choose none here in a few moments. But for right now, just to illustrate a point, what if our REST server required basic authentication? Well, in that case, I would select basic. And as I do so, watch what happens right about here. I'm going to select basic. And as you can see, because I selected basic, a new tab has opened up. And that new tab is going to ask me whatever questions are appropriate for this type of authentication. With basic authentication, we need to supply a username and a password that we can use to authenticate to the REST server. So those two pieces are for the basic authentication. There is this third question here that's asking about what type of session mode we want to use. This is actually not a question about the REST server, but rather a question about the orchestrator server and how it's going to behave. I'm going to select shared session. What shared session means is that no matter which orchestrator user is running the orchestrator workflow that we're going to create, it will always connect to or always authenticate to the REST server using the same credentials. In other words, um, they're sharing the one set of credentials. But sometimes what you want to do is to have each time the orchestrator server connects to that REST server, you might want to have different authentication credentials used. So if you choose per user session, What's going to happen when the user runs your orchestrator workflow is orchestrator is going to authenticate to the rest server using the orchestrator users orchestrator credentials which is not what we want here uh, instead we're going to choose serge session if you don't know how to answer that question you should probably have a chat with your security team uh, they're the ones that typically care about the answer to this question if we choose shared session then we're going to have an easy time of it. It's totally simple to set up shared session. But when you use shared session, since all the orchestrator users are connecting through your workflow to the REST server with the same credentials, shared session does not have as, does not provide as rich of an audit trail over on the REST server. But for our purposes here, shared session is perfect. Actually, it's not so perfect. We're not going to use basic authentication at all. We're not going to use any authentication. We're going to choose none for the joke server. Under proxy settings, this is where I would go to plug in uh, the information necessary to connect to my organization's web proxy. I don't have a web proxy, so I'm going to leave this blank. This checkbox here allows you to specify whether you want Orchestrator to confirm that the host name that we're using to connect to the REST server matches the name that's actually stored inside of the SSL certificate. I'm going to go ahead and say yes in this case. And then the last question here out of all these questions has to do with uh, situations where you're using a private key for client authentication, which we're not doing here, so we'll just leave that blank. All right, so we've answered all the questions. Let's click Run and see what happens. When we run the workflow, it says it's running, and now it says it's complete. So as you can see, it takes very little time at all for us to add a new host. Again, the next step typically would be to run the workflow called add a REST operation, which we'll look at in the next video. But before we leave this video, I want to show you one other little minor point that um, deserves some attention. Let's go run the add a REST host workflow again. So I'm going back to add a REST host. We're going to run this workflow. Uh, this time we're going to connect to the board API uh, REST server that we saw in an earlier video. Uh, its URLs look something like this. Actually, this tail portion is the is the operation. We'll leave that part out, leaving just the base URL. The previous time in this video when I ran this workflow, I checked this checkbox to say, go ahead, automatically, silently accept the certificate from the REST server. For a variety of reasons, you might choose to not do that you might choose to manually install the certificate. 
Now there are a variety of ways that you can do that, but let me show you one. If you want to, to manually import the certificate, then do not check this checkbox. You can go ahead and select the other checkboxes as you see fit. Again, I'm going to use host, uh, no authentication. I have no proxy server. I'll just use the default SSL settings. But the key thing here that you're noticing is I'm not checking this checkbox. Let's go ahead and run the workflow. As you can see, it's running. And instead of going to that completed state that we saw before, it's gone into this waiting state. Now here in Orchestrator, uh, there are a variety of ways we can get information from the user that's running our workflow. One way is the inputs that we just answered. This is using something called a user interaction. The user interaction gets answers to the questions we ask while the workflow is running. So right now, this workflow is waiting for us to answer that question. But what question? Well, to, to respond to this user interaction, to find out what the question is and answer it, we're going to go up to the link here in the upper right hand corner labeled answer. We'll click on answer. And now we can see what the question is. So it's asking us, do you want to import the certificate? Well, we'll go ahead and say, yes, I want to import the certificate. We'll click answer. And we have now successfully manually imported the certificate. So again, it's up to you. You can either automatically uh, accept the certificate or do so manually. Now, again, we've done the first of three key steps here. We've added our REST server. In this case, we've actually added two, but there's more work ahead. Join me in the next video as we continue our exploration into REST and Orchestrator.